Oh. And good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. And we're right on time. The train is just going rolling past. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. But my oh my good morning good morning good morning on and all um yeah this is this is one of those weird ones where it's sort of like what am i what am i really going to talk about <laughs> because to be honest nothing nothing has changed like uh, nothing has changed part of the i was half tempted to re-download the um, the the last the last Good Morning Walk we had, and basically just replay that, just to try and emphasise the fact nothing has changed. <laughs> oh, Dave W, good morning. Uh, Tilly the Coda, good is that yes? Yeah, Tilly the Coda, good morning to you. Uh, Dave W, the cough better, yes it is. Uh, it's still there a bit, but it's you know it's on its way out. Hello, and good morning to you. Oh, but yes, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to a DUP Bonanza. <laughs> oh, because that's where it's certainly going to be next week. <sighs> certainly what it feels like next week. Uh, Hugh, good morning to you from Lancashire. Pretty bird, greetings to you. Oh, yeah, it's, uh... <coughs> <coughs> We're at the point now where it's just like, well... <laughs> Should I buy and live stream a turnip? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> at this point, maybe, who knows, you know? Maybe that's maybe that's to be honest what I should have done. Because <laughs> uh, it certainly feels like it. <laughs> so for those of you who want a brief rundown of essentially where we are, obviously last weekend we had, or at least some news that there was going to be some sort of breakthrough, or at least some sort of new deal from the Northern Ireland Protocol. And Tuesday was billed as the big day that it was going to be, you know, put out. And of course, Tuesday gets delayed to have Rishi Sunak saying on Wednesday that he's not concerned uh, about the, the pushback that there has been uh, in and around this deal. Then on Thursday, he was negotiating relaxedly, whatever that means. Uh, and then on Friday, we sort of really didn't hear anything uh, in regards to whatever there might be with this protocol deal or whatever Rishi Sunak going to propose. Like I say, at this moment, we still don't know. And of course, today, we have heard that there has been very good progress. Whatever that means. <laughs> you know, it's just... We're, uh, what does it mean? <laughs> There's been very good progress. It, it's... Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense, to be honest. It's just, oh very good progress on the protocol congratulations Rishi <laughs> you know? well what is it what is in the deal oh and like I say one of the big things of course is still the fact you've got the DUP you've got the ERG who certainly the DUP all this week have been saying very, very clearly, we're not going to accept the deal. So, for once, this is actually something me and Jacob Rees-Mogg 
actually agree on, shockingly enough, but hey, as they say, a broken clock is right twice a day. Why spend so much political capital? Bear in mind, it's political capital that Rishi Sunak does not have <laughs> um, to try and do a deal on the protocol that does not have backing from the DUP and that the DUP is not going to accept and the whole point of this by Rishi Sunak was to try and get the DUP back into power sharing I mean <laughs> just, just welcome welcome to the roundabout that is uh, British politics when it comes to the Northern Ireland Protocol um, it's just almost a forever circle with clear uh, on and off points to this roundabout except uh, the DUP unfortunately and the ERG are at the wheel <laughs> you know Sunak is not at the wheel when it comes to this oh good morning Cathology as well uh, yeah stop clock um, can be mostly wrong most of the day just like the Tory party <laughs> exactly Uh, Tilly, uh, if Sunak fails to please the ERG, uh, uh, but hang on, there we go. Uh, but for, forwards a bill uh, that will resolve uh, with a budget vote down, potentially. Um, I mean, it's it's how the ERG would eventually punish him, I suppose. Um, because as everyone has sort of pointed out Sunak doesn't actually really need to go to a vote in the house uh, <coughs> but the ERG will ultimately force one uh, on him right, good morning Dean from Australia good morning g'day <laughs> or good evening <laughs> as, as it may be Oh, Dennis, good morning. Oh, good, uh, good, uh, yeah, good evening, as they say. <laughs> oh. So, it's, it, is a, it is a valid point of how would the DUP punish him? Well, not the DUP, the ERG. And I suppose it would be the fact that Sunak doesn't have to go to a vote but the ERG would probably force a vote, um, one at which I think they would probably lose, given the fact that Labour, and quite rightly, has said that, you know, if this deal is in the national interest, you know, we'll support it. So, we just don't know what's in the deal, we're just gonna have to wait for it. Uh, Larry the Cat, good morning to you. <laughs> I suppose this this is the what we've been saying all week since we've heard about it. We don't know what's in you know what's being negotiated. We just don't know. And really until we know we can't predict how all these sides are going to react, but almost instantly though, we can very much predict certainly the ERG are not going to be happy. And the DUP have already, already been making uh, noises. They're going to reject it. So, <laughs> you need a, you need a stiff drink from Aldi, right? <laughs> Uh, oh, Crowban, good morning to you. Remove the whip from the ERG. Uh, they can't be a bigger pain outside the Tory party. Remove the whip. Again, Sunak would never remove the whip. This is, this is what... This is just how weak he is. He would never, ever do that. It's... You know, if he was... Like a generally strong prime minister, 
he would stare down like the ERG and just say, well, the only reason we're in this position is it's your guys' fault. And just highlight continuously what an absolute cavalcade of failures the ERG have continuously brought on this country and on the party. You know, he should stare them down, bring them into line, and if they still revolt, or they still cause problems, that's when he would sort of remove the whip from them. But he's not a strong prime minister. He's not a strong prime minister at all. And as a result, the ERG just gets it and, well, have been running wild in the Tory party for a very long time because numerous Tory prime ministers have just refused to take them on because they are a very small but influential and powerful faction in the Conservative Party. And people have said, oh, they've, they've lost their influence trying to, you know, downplay um, the ERG we've seen over a couple of days, but no. Um, it's not happening, what's this? Susan Nichols. Sunak has ordered a three-line whip for Monday. <laughs> that could be interesting. David, good morning to you. Sorted out my cough, just about. <laughs> yeah, Stuart's so lit, so tiny, you can't even stare them down without a step stool. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We should call him Tiny, Tiny Sunak. <laughs> or Rishi Little. So, in terms of anything that's interesting happened this week with regard to that, you know, nothing's changed. And that's the biggest point about all this. Nothing has changed. And I said at the beginning of it, just for those of you who, who have entered late, but I said at the beginning of it, I was half tempted just to download um, last time's Good Morning Walk and just replay that <laughs> because that's how much nothing has changed in regards to this it's it's the continuing roundabout of this whole saga that has been like this since Theresa May all the way back from her checkers speech in 2017 you know it's it, it's crazy but yeah Now, and I found someone new that I really would, really would love to talk to. That he's more a Twitch politics streamer than a uh, than a than a sort of a YouTuber. But I think he would be, I think he'd be a very, very good, uh, interesting guy to talk to. Um, for those of you who know, I do follow a guy called uh, Dylan uh, Dylan Burns, um, and he was on a roundtable podcast about globalism versus nationalism and he was on with Destiny and a couple of other uh, streamers but one of the streamers from Twitch Politics was a British guy I would be fascinated to speak to him because from what I could tell he was a committed Lexiteer someone who was on the left but voted for Brexit um, I'd, I'd be actually fascinated to talk to him <laughs> just from that uh, perspective because I think we don't hear lots from these legacies and we never heard lots of them from the uh, back in 2016 so that will be interesting to hear him talk to Cath OG uh, Steve Baker is reportedly on resignation watch after being frozen out of negotiations well yeah <laughs> it doesn't surprise me obviously he's the current Northern Ireland minister um, so, 
We've supposedly got on resignation watch. Now we've got Steve Baker to add to it. There's Suella Braverman, which let's face it, wouldn't be a colossal loss. Uh, but obviously, politically to Rishi Sunak would be a quite a big loss. And it just depends how many other people would resign. And would you get a moment almost like, you know, like what took down Boris Johnson of people just can't form a government with him or just refuse to go um, into government with him at the helm, which then kicks off a giant leadership election. <laughs> it's possible. Mithril, good morning to you. Sorry, cat. any turnips in your area? Uh, <coughs> <coughs> I don't know, uh, to be honest, I don't know if Barnes is a, a big turnip growing area. We are a big rhubarb growing area though. Uh, we are in the rhubarb triangle, smack dab, right in the center of it. Uh, Jay, oh, good morning. Good morning, cold hay, well, good morning to you. Unlike Kate Hoey, yeah. <laughs> oh. There would be an interesting conversation. There would be such an interesting conversation. Oh, oh pony. There you go, in the background. <laughs> Dobby, aka Cruella, uh, Cruella Braverman, is having a bit of a seat problem uh, from what you hear. Is she? Oh. That would be that would be interesting if uh, she's having a bit of a seat problem. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Rhubarb, where's the custards? <laughs> well, like I say, we are, you know, this part of Yorkshire is actually perfect rhubarb uh, growing territory. So, yeah, lots of lots of rhubarb uh, from uh, from uh, the rhubarb triangle, as we say. And speaking of triangles. <laughs> Uh, we are maybe about to enter the, the Barnsley Triangle. <laughs> oh, due to boundary changes. Yeah, that's, it's, that's just going to be interesting how much these boundary changes are actually going to affect. Indeed, we have probably... Uh, John. Uh, Braverman should be made to stop. Man, uh, need to eat. Uh, we'll get on okay one day drinking a beer. <laughs> uh, buffering in the rhubarb triangle. <laughs> New sci fi movie by Ball Hat Man. Yeah, we're, we're back indeed. Caroline, good morning to you. Talk amongst yourselves. Am I, I'm actually back here on the stream. That's obviously the big morning. The big quarrels. See, this is the thing, it doesn't actually show what it's like when it's being transmitted, because it looks fine on my end. <laughs> Dave Walker, good morning to you, and Paul, good morning to you as well. Yeah, what a week, what a week ahead. <laughs> um, I believe it was Suzanne uh, Nichols, you just said that Sunak's ordered a three-line whip uh, for Monday, so it could very well all kick off on Monday. <laughs> so, yeah. Strap yourselves in, because just like last week I was telling you it might be an interesting week, well, <laughs> this week could also be an interesting week, you know? Because one of the things that has been certainly put forward uh, by a couple of people is that Sunak could pacify the ERG by also passing the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill. And basically giving them, well, look, I've done this deal, but you know, the Northern Ireland Protocol bill is also being passed, so, you know, we can make changes if we want to. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I don't understand, though, how he does it, because even if it does pass, I, th I think it's still going to be retaliation from the, uh, from the uh, EU. And then it's... <laughs> 
it all goes a bit uh, peaked on, as they say. <sighs> Cath OG, is Boris going to turn up for the vote? Uh, since it turns out he's only turned up to one since the confidence vote. Probably. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. <coughs> In fact, he wouldn't surprise me if both Boris and Liz <laughs> turn up for this. Um, if this is going to be sort of a big vote on Monday, because um, again, like I say, we're told uh, this morning, oh, oh, oh. we're told this morning on the news that apparently the deal is almost ready. Yeah, people voted for Brexit, deal with it. <laughs> this is it, they can't deal with it. They can't deal with the consequences that they knew was going to happen. <laughs> this is, you know, this is what we've talked about for years and years. Uh, there will always be consequences. And we asked, how do you intend to deal with these consequences? Only to be told that these consequences wouldn't happen. David, good morning to you. Steve, good morning to you. Uh, do you see any tomatoes uh, in your in your local shop? Uh, no, not the moment. How burnt will this oven ready deal be? Well, um, we'll find out if um, if this deal really is coming on uh, on Monday. I suppose we'll find out very soon. That's for sure. That's very very much for sure. And it's going to be um, hmm, interesting, to say the least. Paul Clark, good morning to you. Because we've always said, what's in the deal? And we already know the DUP aren't going to accept the deal because their seven red lines are very clear. And essentially, if you want to clear their red lines, it pretty much Tantamount is basically would mean a complete tearing up of the protocol deal. So that's a complete non starter. And then <coughs> the ERG are also going to be kicking off about this. <laughs> so Right from the word go, this is, you know, this is this is a complete non-starter. <laughs> it's an absolute non-starter for this deal, and we've been hearing from the DUP, um, not just you know Donaldson, but a couple of their Westminster MPs. We're not going to accept the deal, so. At that point, what, what, what do you do? <laughs> you know, what does Sunak do? He does this deal, and then the DUP still refused to go into power sharing. <laughs> Just... Oh, yeah, never trust a country that has democratic applied to its name. <laughs> So we are, as we've always said, on this roundabout. Number three, good morning. We're just on this continuing roundabout again. It's just... I don't see how they do it. Ben Ridings, good morning. And I worry that Keir Starmer is also going to have very similar problems as well. Because uh, I don't see if he has any serious solutions uh, to solving this problem yet. I mean, we've barely heard him talk about them. That's, that's one of the worrying things that certainly worries me. Um, but of course, the other thing you have that Sunak probably is not going to deal with 
is it doesn't look like Starmer has to deal with that pro um, pro Brexit block that certainly the Tories have to deal with, which in a way will be good for them. <laughs> but yeah, certainly proves could be very interesting. It's for one thing. On in. So we continue on this ridiculous roundabout of a path where there's no solution. The DUP aren't going to accept it. The EHG aren't going to accept it. It might pass, but then this causes trouble for Sunak politically. And then the ERG and the DUP are just going to start causing problems for him. Uh, Stormont seat would be uh, would be changed to use it or lose it. Plea DUP just blocked just fine. Um, this is what a lot of people have actually talked about uh, recently, uh, even in the select committee uh, on Northern Ireland. Uh, they've actually had serious conversations about this. Do we get rid of the veto power? And. I've said it, I think it's the only way you can really get the ER, get the DUP um, on board. Like a fundamental change to sort of Stormont and how it works. I think that's the only way. Um, you sort of can really do this. But it's... Uh, even that will have its political challenges. That's not going to be easy either. And of course, to make those changes means renegotiating, potentially, at that point, the Good Friday Agreement. Now, I think Ireland and the US, if Sunak goes to them and says, look, here's the problem. We need to change Stormont because the DUP are being just so obstructionist uh, they're just going to block anything uh, that we do. Well, excellent. I, I think they probably might change it. Uh, if if that, I can't see them doing that. Night one leads. Good morning to you. Charam was releasing a cookbook, 101 ways uh, for cooking recipes for your old shoes. <laughs> Patrick H. Good morning. Uh, just cut the wages. I mean, that's something else that has been talked about. You know, the fact that you have uh, DUP members in the uh, in the House of Commons that have taken seats and are getting paid, but the Stormont ones aren't. And no one in Stormont is technically getting paid because of the DUP at the moment. So that's causing uh, issues from what I know. Um, and we said it very, from the very start of this whole uh, whole affair. You know, what the DUP is doing is completely unfair to the people of Northern Ireland. And even DUP voters, and I know that there are DUP voters who agree with what the DUP are doing on this. But as we've said time and time again, this is the DUP deal. This is the bed that they made. They should now have to lie in it, or at least the voters should have to understand that, look, the situation that you are in is because of the decisions that the ERG made. If you don't like it, don't blame the UK government, blame Certainly, the uh, DUP, who were egged on by people in the ERG, in the Tories, uh, to get rid of Theresa May and her backstop idea. Because this is one thing I have to wonder, <coughs> um, potentially what might be being suggested. We've heard, of course, Rishi Sunak getting the moniker of Rishi May 
because he might be trying to put forward uh, Theresa May's backstop deal, or at least a backstop-like proposal. Um, it's absolutely crazy on so many fronts uh, that this could happen, but I don't see any other way than than if you actually seriously make uh, political changes to the system of Stormont and how it's run. Unless you get rid of that uh, veto power, I, I, I don't see how, how it works. And even then, I don't think, to be honest, Sunak's gonna last for too much longer. Um, you know, if he does pass this deal, there is going to be an almighty uproar. So it's not like he's going to be able to pass anything because the ERG and the DUP may likely just go, well, until we get what we want, nothing is passing. We are voting no on everything until this happens. It's a possibility at that point. Um... Oh, oh yeah, that's the other thing uh, that happened. <coughs> that, the, that apparently Sunak has tried to uh, get the king involved to get his uh, blessing for the uh, changes in the hopes, in the hopes, of course, that somehow um, that the DUP would then accept it. Because if it's got the king's blessing, then somehow the DUP will magically change their mind on this. Again, I don't see how that actually changes anyone's mind, certainly the DUPs, on the protocol. So, it makes no sense continuing on it. And trying to cause a constitutional crisis as well. Yeah, exactly. That's what it would indeed would cause. Um, and we've already heard, you know, Charles has denied um, his involvement in any of this. <coughs> oh, hang on, right, there we are, we're buffering. But yeah, whether he has actually tried, tried this, it's, yeah, exactly, Mithril. It's desperation. It does. It's absolute desperation. You know, I don't know. At least I don't think even Sunak realises, to be honest. Or he might even do. He might actually realise the severe mess he's in. But to be honest, if he wants to get himself out of it, the only way, the only way he can get himself out of this is he's got to take on the ERG, he's got to take on the DUP. Now the DUP is a bit easier because they're not his party, but it's the ERG that's the problem. And if he stare, tries and stares them down, then he's got two threats he can make. First of all, he can try and remove the whip. If he tries and removes the whip, then instantly, instantly, because the, the ERG, as far as we know, have the numbers, they could trigger a leadership election. <laughs> so <coughs> that is, is something that they would absolutely do. And then of course you've got the threat of, from Rishi Sunak, well if you don't, um, if you don't start playing ball, I'm gonna call a general election. And the thing is, as we've said before, Sunak can only do that once. That's a threat he can only ever make once. And if he doesn't call it, then what, what does he do? Plus also it could backfire on him. As you've said, as you've said before as well, that the ERG could just turn around and just go, okay, call one. We don't care. So, Sunak has very limited options. He was already walking on a tightrope 
and now this tightrope has essentially shrunken to the size of, I don't know, floss. That's how small his tightrope has now gone. But we'll find out this week, I suspect. Yet the hostage party, hope for Stockholm Syndrome. Exactly, it's, it's shocking that Sunak is being well and truly held hostage by his own party, but it's not the first time this has happened. Theresa May also held hostage by her own party. It's, uh, it's just one continuing thing after another. And it is all Brexit related. <laughs> I can see your chance of pony in the mat in the chat. So don't worry. Ta-da. I really don't, Pony. I really don't. And what does he do, Pony? What, is, what does Rishi Sunak do? <laughs> oh. Nicole Smith, end spiel starting, potentially at this moment. <laughs> calls a G, there's no other solution. Well, again, you look at the polls, and it's a, G, it's a general election. He's going to lose. He's going to lose it by a very significant margin. And even then, after that, if he does lose it, well, he will have to step down, and then there will be another Tory leadership contest, which I think at that point will properly kick off the very much the cold war that the conservatives have been fighting the cold civil war will hot up very very quickly because one of the things that we've always seen was when brexit happened was pretty much all their talent all their people who knew what was going to happen did two things first of all they left they left the parliamentary party or they just went to the back benches and have kept quiet for a long time or they've left the parliamentary party but are still in the non-parliamentary party and that doesn't mean they still can't cause trouble. They can just cause trouble in a different way. <coughs> especially, especially when the Conservatives are out of power and Sunak, or whoever, whoever replaces him, um, will essentially have no goodies to give out. There will be no... <laughs> Um, rewards to give out it was one of the many things that Johnson had found himself he only had you know so many shinies from his prime ministerial box to give out to his loyalists and even then he had sort of very much stretched them thin and of course now you've got Sunak who's in a position where he can't even remove uh, some of these people because they would kick off and it would cause even more factional warfare in the Conservative Party. Um, it's, it just, it's, just, it's just absolutely unbelievable at this point that we are in this state. But that is where we find ourselves in. God, Gove is the PM. 
that's not beyond the uh, possibilities. Um, I mean, Gove is one of those people who, he was like one of the true core Brexiteers of 2016. Yet in all the big Brexit fights, we've had all the battles, uh, you know, the plum Brexit positions. He's the only one, he's the only one who has not had to take a bite of the proverbial Brexit apple. And thus he's sort of managed to escape a lot of the consequences of trying to deal with Brexit. So maybe maybe Michael Gove has been playing the long game all this time. <laughs> he could he could very well be uh, be doing that. So but yes, anyway. Uh, thank you once again for joining me for today's Good Morning Walk. Um, unfortunately, there will not be a Good Morning Walk next weekend because I've got to deal with the world president from JCI. He's coming for a visit to the UK. Uh, he's coming from Iceland, so I've got to go and you know fulfil my presidential duties and look after him, or, or as we say, babysit for the weekend, which is super annoying, but there you go. Uh, like I say, he's the world president. So... Uh, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming along, joining us today on today's Good Morning Walk. It's been absolutely fantastic to see you all. Please remember to hit the like and share button on your way out. And of course, there are links down below to my Patreon page, one after nation link called Buy Me Coffee, the YouTube thank you button. There's the Pony Club down below as well. Um, there's the Patreon page as well. Thank you very much to everyone who does... Um, Again, support the channel that way, even if you only just click the like and share button. Like I say, thank you so much. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button as well. And of course, as always, thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of the weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week because next week could get interesting very fast if it is true that there is could be a vote on this deal as soon as Monday. <sighs> so we'll see you all then.